So let's look first at the feet. And for our purposes here, we're going to be looking mostly at the performance and the function of the arches, the flexibility of the arches, the ankle strength and mobility, and to some extent the Achilles tendon and of course the, the calf flexibility. So we'll, we will address different types of footwork patterns, different types of fakes and setups and baits to get in, um, but at this point we're looking more at capacity. The fundamental footwork requires a, a basic amount of mobility and strength, but it's more the, the bearing of load and the, the, the sort of acquisition of position that places the greatest demand, the greatest strain on our body. In performing a throw, you will see differently uh, that some people perform throws completely flat-footed. Some people will lift up slightly onto the toes. Uh, or sometimes only the toes on one fit, foot. Um, sometimes, in the case of a much larger or more, much more momentous throw, people will roll backwards onto their heels, lifting up both uh, toes as they throw the opponent over. And in some cases, people will have the hips kind of cantilevered, with one foot square and in alignment with the hip, but another toe pointing off in a way in the direction of the ultimate throw. There are reasons for all of these. Um, they can all, you know, some approaches are going to argue one is better than the other. But what I want you as a practitioner to understand is why they occur. And I want us to be aware of what we tend to default to. What do we do most of the time? If I am up against a much larger opponent or if I'm performing a throw very, very quickly, I and most people in my experience will sort of, you know, Charlie Chaplin back on the heels and lift up both toes. And that's just a, a you know, a, a reflection of, of stealing their center, knocking up their base, having to push your hips back a little bit harder, recruiting your legs to a fuller elongation and having a bit more twist. And as that massive density that you're loading and leading suddenly goes over you and that vacuum's created, we will tend to stumble back and those toes will come up. So that's quite normal. As for being flat-footed, um, can be extremely advantageous if you're extremely balanced and some people have that capacity. Um, I tend to lift up the heels slightly. I prefer to be buoyant and elastic. I find it better and safer for my knees and very often it is sufficient for me to only lift up one knee. Many judoka will have uh, very, very narrow stances. Many practitioners, for example, in samba will use the same approach, but you'll also see in some styles of judo, and particularly in some styles of combatives, people will use a much wider, wider stance wherein they uh, lock the opponent or block the opponent's foot, and that can also be advantageous. My concerns are when we lose leg integrity, when my knees buckle inwards, which is never a good thing, or where I'm not able to get deep enough under my opponent and I muscle. And that's usually a reflection of tightness in the, in the ankles and the Achilles tendon, uh, the calf, and it's tightness in the hips specifically. And very often we'll see people perform the throw, but rather than go gracefully with it or maintain their balance, they'll lose integrity and stumble in a very uh, unhealthy biomechanical way. And again, very often that's just a lack of range of motion uh, in the ankles and the toes and in the arches. So we're going to look at some very, very simple but effective exercises that are great for strengthening, for building awareness, and also for recuperating from any sorts of injuries that you might encounter in these areas as well. Okay, so one of the very first things we need to do is we need to see what we're working with. So our basic test now, not for conditioning so much, but for mobility training, is to bring both of our feet together as tightly as we can, squeeze them together, and to see if we can comfortably squat down to some degree. Now, the ideal, the fullest range of motion we can have is to squat heels all the way down, uh, or butt all the way down to the heels rather, without lifting up the heels. What we will typically see, particularly when the feet are together, is that people will start to compensate and counterbalance with the arms, which is fine, natural, normal, healthy, and forgivable. People will go forward like this and use the arms for counterbalance because they are tighter, in the, specifically in the ankles, the Achilles tendons, and they're, and they're wanting to roll back. So that's fine, that does happen. Or we will see the heels start to lift up. All right, so again, basic position, feet are together. I'm far away from the wall, nothing's touching. And I see if I can squat down. That's my first goal. So if I see that my arms are counterbalancing forward, if I have this, this reflex, I would suggest placing your shoulder against the wall and see if you can, rather than reach forward, if you can reach forward slightly, and if you can use this as some degree of support. 
right, to help gain a little bit of friction. Sometimes you can even grow it to just pushing your shoulder into the wall and squat. So that would be my, my first go-to tool. My second is to use the wall as a support. So now my goal is to lean back, right? I want to stand with about, you know, six to eight centimeters between my back and the wall so that it's not quite up against me. And then two, fall into it with my back. And from here, I slide down, feet together, all the way down to a full squat. So this will allow me to build up strength. Rather than reach forward with my arms, I would encourage you to push backwards with your arms. And this will bring more weight forward onto your toes. If you see that your heels are starting to lift up, then what we need to do in this situation is to muscularly push them down. And sometimes you can even think of putting an arm or your hands on the knees to drive them down. But by staying in this type of a position for a minute or two under load, making this a regular part of your workout, you will grow this functionally under load. You will, you will strengthen the body and stretch it at the same time, and you will gradually adapt all the systems needed to get you into this lowest possible squat. This is a range of motion you had as a child in most cases. It's a range of motion that is maintained in most cultures because they, they simply don't live shackled to a desk and it's a range of motion you can get back and you need to have and deserve to have in your daily life. Now, a really, really, really central fundamental exercise is foot crawling. And this is the idea of getting as low as we can, trying to get those heels down and moving the feet and exploring on the ground. This is excellent for all aspects of the structures we're looking at, the arches, the Achilles tendon, the ankle strength and mobility, deeply stretches the calf, and of course, it also gets into the hip. We start to get into the spine to some level. We condition the legs at a massive level. So it's a win-win-win across the board. Now to do this, I would love to have my heels on the floor. That's the end goal. If I have a slight hiccup, a slight space under the heels where I'm kind of popping up and down a little bit, that's fine, that's forgivable. But again, I would rather have the experience for the cultivation of having my, my heels down. So if I need to grab something, put a strap around a punching bag and hang back, or if I need to, you know, grip onto a wall, then I should do it. Or simply start again from a distance and lean back into the wall. This is fine. This is good. Now, uh, another thing I can do as well, for example, in our school, we use a lot of these uh, phone books that are just covered in duct tape. We use them for punching. We use them for all sorts of practice. You can line those up, make a little shelf for yourself and this allows you to control height going from one book to two books and you can place your your heels on there it's almost the equivalent of a squat hack a little bit of a cheat um, much like a meditation pillow to help save your knees over long periods of kneeling meditation and this is fantastic what's beautiful about using a ledge regardless of your your capacity is that you can grow it further so i can get my heels all the way down to the ground but when i work it with the heels up i start to feel more of a, of, a, of a lateral sort of strain. I normally get it more balanced over the bone, now it starts to work the outside. I can also play with lifting up my toes, taking my toes off the ground, and working that balance. Now, of course, you can do that just by transferring your weight, but you try to do it more muscularly. You try to lead from the toes first, and then lift, lift and bring your weight back. And this is fantastic. You'll feel all of the insteps and the ankles being worked. And you find that core stability in the ankles and in the feet it's fantastic, right? It's a really great workout. So that's easy to do. Um, it's an easy fix. It's cheap, old books, any type, preferably of the same size so you don't get wonky. Otherwise, you'll start to question why you're walking around in circles all the time. But I just want to get this kind of a low squat. Now, from the low squat, I have two basic ways that I can work. I can, I can work on my width, meaning I move my feet further apart, or my depth. To work on my width, what I'm going to do basically is I'm going to use toe movement, and heel movement. So I'm gonna lift up just to show you beyond the balls of the feet and place my hands over here on the side. I can lift up my heel and rotate it out and then transfer and rotate my toes and transfer and rotate my heels like that. Right? So toes and heels, I can go wider or narrower. And this kind of work on width is fantastic. I can work on the width of my knees to work more on the hips and to stretch. But even in stretching the hips, I'll start to feel my ankles. And all of these poses you'll see in yoga, like the crow, where I open up my knees and I lean forward, these are fantastic. These are great. Very often what I'll do is I'll kind of get my arms inside 
and churn. So I'm working all of my thorax and my arms, my upper body, but at the same time, I'm working my hips, working my ankles. I can even go on the blades of the feet and lift up. And so this kind of work is, is excellent. It's just fantastic work. The heels can lift and I can rotate at any time. Right? There's no wrong or right way. I just want to explore how from this low farmer squat I can go wider and narrower. And this basic work is amazing. Secondly, I can work depth. Depth involves moving forward with my mass and moving back. So the simplest way to do it, if I didn't have heel down capacity, I cheat with the wall and I work here. But now I work at moving my tailbone up and forward. And I see when do my heels lift. I can open, this is more for the hip, but it also works the ankles. Or I can just stay within and I can kind of churn with the hip. So this type of movement working over my base is fantastic. However you work, I can't encourage you enough. Make it fun. Make it fun, guys. So often when we confront our limitations, it's, you know, we can moan and we can make jokes about it, but at the base, we, I joke and I complain all the time. I get up and in front of my students, I'll say, oh my God, I'm in so much pain, and I'll be all dinged up, and there's a lot of truth to it but it's a razor's edge because inside of that comment or inside of that mindset, you're either going to be fundamentally negative and discouraged and you know, depressed about those injuries and those limitations or else you're gonna be challenged by it. And I cannot emphasize enough the need to thrive, the need to see the challenge, the need to fight it. We are all in different phases of capacity. We're all on a spectrum. I'm in a capacity phase where, of course, getting older, I'm losing, I'm deteriorating at a genetic level, at a natural level, but I'm trying to gain where I can, maintain where I can, and slow down as much as I can, all the rest. You'll all get there someday if you're not already ahead of me or at the same point. When we're young, we have all sorts of other frustrations, limitations that we want. We want to gain size and strength and mass. We, we, it's far harder when you're younger to conserve your energy because it's just so easy to use it. But however you're working out and whatever you're working out, look at the fundamental motive. Try to find not just a survival reflex, a desperate reflex, but a thrive reflex, a desire to maximize, to seek, to learn more about your body, to gain more, to get the best that you can. You know, it's the whole, if you got lemons, let's make lemonade kind of mindset, but that's fundamentally what it is. Because a lot of people will make exactly the same comments that I'm making and they'll complain and they'll joke but then you learn over time that deep down inside they're feeling something more deeply rooted and more negative. This type of work is tough, right? It can be challenging. Sometimes when you can't get your heels down it's just pure up frustrating and it's so easy to quit and it's so easy to say well I'm never gonna have that. I'm not flexible. I don't have that genetically. I didn't have heels down when I started Sistema and I had a lifetime of jiu-jitsu behind me and other martial arts but I gained it, and I gained it early on, partly because the exercises were good despite being taught poorly. Uh, I, I started to see little glimmers of hope, and then I started educating myself and seeking out external sources and, and better sources and mixing them together. And I'm trying to put them all down in one package as clearly as I can, but I wish back in time when I was a, a teenager or a younger man, somebody would have said, hey man, just do this for intelligence and for health and grow your body and have fun with it and play with it. And I would have avoided so many injuries and I would have grown so much more quickly. So when doing this work, find a way to make it fun, find a way to make it playful. But at the end of the day, whatever you have can be improved, even if it's only in an awareness of what you have. I've said it in other downloads, the founder of SEAL Team 6, Richard Marchenko, once said that you know there's a misconception about elite Navy SEALs or elite Special Forces people that they can all bench press 500 pounds or you know do these miraculous physical feats. And he said while they all are extremely physically fit, the true defining characteristic is that they push their limits, they know their limits, and they respect their limits. So that on any given day, they have a very accurate, intuitive, inner, uh, innate understanding of what they could do right then. They know because they've tested themselves so much, they know to walk away, to attempt to climb or not attempt to climb, to do a jump or not attempt to jump, to hold their breath or not hold it, they, they know. And they've failed and been broken, or in our cases, been hit and tapped out so many times that they go, yeah, I'd rather not, it's not worth the risk, you know, and they walk away. And that's really the sign of a mature warrior, in, in my estimation. 
So doing this kind of work, find no excuse to make an excuse. Laugh about it, joke about it, celebrate your limitations, get into it. The longer you squat like this, the more you will gain. When I was living in India, I would see people, you know, in their 90s, half blind, working in markets, squatting like this effortlessly, never shifting. And you know what, I trained at some gushti at some wrestling schools there, and from the, the little, little kids up to the elders, people could sit in this, work in this, jump up. There was no lactic acid, there was no soreness in the knees. They maintained this capacity all the time. And so we can grow it back to a higher level, always be gaining, and we can be maintaining this very, very easily. But we need to get past the ego, get past the judgment, get past the self-doubt in order to do it. So find a joyful place to do this work, guys.